Hello, and thank you for taking a few minutes to view this informational recording about the Jack Kent Cook Foundation's Young Scholars Program. The Cook Foundation is a nonprofit scholarships and grants provider based in Northern Virginia, and the foundation has existed since the year 2000 and has been fortunate to award millions of dollars in scholarship funding to thousands of students across the nation, thanks to the legacy of Mr. Jack Kent Cook who left a substantial part of his fortune to establish the foundation for the purpose of supporting high achieving students in obtaining higher education. So in this slideshow, I will give a brief overview of the Cook Young Scholars Program. If you are a seventh grade student, or making plans for seventh grade year, or if you're a family member, teacher, or counselor supporting that grade level, this information will be helpful in understanding what the Young Scholars Program is, if you're eligible, and how you can apply. First, I'll share a little more information about the Cook Foundation. The mission of the foundation is to help advance the education of some of the most academically promising students who demonstrate financial need. We do this primarily through the scholarship program support that we offer and some grant giving to other organizations as well. We also have other scholarships besides the Young Scholars Program, including the College Scholarship Program and the Undergraduate Transfer Scholarship. The foundation awards anywhere from 150 to 200 new scholarships each year between all three of the scholarship programs. So each of these programs consists of not only scholarship funding, but other functions of support as well. So more than just receiving money, becoming a Cook Scholar is about participating in an experience that helps students grow. Um, and this experience has three main components, the first being the personalized advising. So young scholars each work with an educational advisor, and this person is their guide to navigating the program. They communicate every four to six weeks via phone or video chat about how they're doing in school and discuss important educational decisions. Scholars engage in an annual goal setting process as well that they work on with their advisor and they receive college counseling to help navigate the college application process. So this advising relationship usually becomes the most critical part of success in the program. Then of course we have financial support um, and this is scholarship money that is awarded to each young scholar to pursue educational enrichment opportunities during their time in high school. And this funding is determined by creating what we call an individualized learning plan. And this plan maps out how the scholarship dollars will be spent on that student for the academic year. So one example of something we would cover is the cost of summer enrichment programs, which all scholars are actually required to attend. But there are many possibilities for, for what can be included in the individualized learning plan and the scholarship budget. And finally, the scholar community is an important aspect of the program experience because scholars benefit from getting to know each other and expanding their network of peers and mentors. The program framework includes facilitated scholar interactions. Again, the advisor is the main person that's navigating this with the scholars. So for example, on some of the calls with their advisor, scholars might join a group call with other students in their cohort. They also attend virtual events and there is an active alumni network that connects with current scholars and can help guide them toward their goals. And so again, part of the advisor's job is to help facilitate that community so scholars are having opportunities and learning how to make connections with others. And I just mentioned personalized advising and the role of the educational advisor. On this slide are a few examples of responsibilities of the advisors. 
when it comes to guiding and supporting their caseload. Uh, the advisor's main objective is to build a strong relationship with the scholar and their family and guide them in making the best educational decisions for the scholar. They also visit the scholars when they begin the program and are the main person overseeing the scholarship expenses for the student and helping them prepare uh, and navigate that individualized learning plan. These are a few examples of other educational support that the scholarship could potentially pay for. So we mentioned summer programs that you see there along with several others. The individualized learning plans are usually tailored to address the specific needs of that student. So no two plans look exactly the same or spend the exact same dollar amount. But these are just some common examples that the program has supported in years past. And again, determining how the funding is spent is an ongoing conversation that each scholar has with their advisor. So I mentioned the scholar community already as well. On this slide, I'll discuss the community programs in a little more detail. Um, so during the rising ninth grade summer, all scholars plus one parent or guardian attend what we call Welcome Weekend, which is a four-day residential orientation to the Young Scholars Program. The new cohort of scholars get to meet each other and begin diving deeper into what their expectations will be as young scholars throughout high school. And then immediately following Welcome Weekend, only the students remain and continue for another two to three weeks in a summer program called First Summer. So their first summer program experience as a Cook Young Scholar occurs together with their entire cohort. Uh, and scholars also attend summer programs in 10th and 11th grade. Those programs are selected based on their academic interests and are not attended as a cohort. Then, when they are entering 12th grade, they attend uh, a program called Senior Summit, where they get the opportunity to conduct research alongside university faculty and graduate students in a particular field to get more hands-on experience related to their interests. Um, and they start to work on the college application process, the college search process, um, and they're reconnecting with some of their peers and their cohorts uh, based on um, shared interests um, at this point as well. Another exciting prospect of becoming a Cook Young Scholar is the opportunity to apply for the Cook College Scholarship Program. This is another one of the scholarship opportunities that I mentioned before that the foundation offers and it provides up to $40,000 per year for four years to attend any accredited college or university in the United States. Young scholars do not automatically receive this scholarship um, as young scholars, um, but they do have um, the opportunity to apply and they have the advantage of having already experienced the Cook Scholarship Program as a young scholar, having the support of their advisor um, and getting a lot of support in completing their application. So more than 90% of young scholars go on to attend college and receive um, a college scholarship from the Cook Foundation. So if all of this sounds appealing and like it might be a good fit, the next question is, how do you know if a student is a good fit to apply for this program? Well, the first step, of course, is meeting the eligibility requirements. Students need to meet all of these requirements you see on this slide in order to submit an application. So the program application is for students that are currently in seventh grade or entering eighth grade um, in the fall. And uh, since the beginning of sixth grade, they've earned all or mostly A's in their academic subjects. They also reside in the United States and plan to attend high school in the United States. And then I mentioned financial need previously, 
what we mean by that and how we define that is that um, the student must have a maximum annual gross income of $95,000 per year. Um, so if you fall under that um, amount for your family income, then you would be eligible to apply. It's also helpful to know the selection criteria that our committee of application readers and staff are looking for when evaluating, evaluating applications. Um, applications are scored on three main criteria, uh, and then later financial need is evaluated uh, in context with uh, a weighted score taken from the other three criteria that we were looking at in the application. I'll talk a little bit about the criteria. Academic achievement um, is sort of the primary, uh, most heavily weighted um, criteria when we're evaluating applications. We're looking for a strong academic record. Um, we look at report cards. We also ask students to submit recommendations from teachers, and we'll look at their responses to um, short answer and essay questions in the application. Uh, with persistence, the committee is looking for evidence of determination and perseverance in response to challenges that the student may have faced, and also looking for the ability to set and remain focused on goals. And with leadership, we will want to see evidence of the ability to positively influence others, um, as well as purposeful commitment to serving others. And again, financial need, um, as I mentioned on the previous slide, um, we'll consider applicants with family income up to $95,000. Last year's cohort of new young scholars, the average income was about $38,000. Uh, so demonstrated need is an important aspect of what we evaluate, just as the selection criteria is. When evaluating the criteria I just mentioned, we will ask for the applicant to complete and submit everything you see listed on this slide. Uh, we will ask for uploaded copies um, submitted to the online application portal. And we prefer not to receive mailed copies. The application is only available online and we don't have paper copies of the application. So hopefully it's easiest to submit everything right in the application portal. For income reporting, we will ask families to self-report their income at the time of submitting the application. And then later, um, as I just mentioned, later during the review process, we may request additional documents to help us verify the family's finances. And typically those documents will be tax returns. Um, if you happen to not have uh, tax returns, then we'll work with you individually to figure out what documents we would need to verify the income that you receive. Once you begin the application, um, you'll see in your portal at the bottom of the menu on the left, you will see a review button that allows you to track your progress on the application. And I included this slide um, just so you can be aware and be sure to click that before you submit to make sure everything that is required has been completed and uploaded. Sections that are not completed will be highlighted in red as you see on this slide. So this is just a good opportunity to sort of check your progress periodically, take a look at this review tab to see what's missing and make sure that before you hit submit, um, you have everything completed because that is a requirement in order for us to accept and review the application. All right, in addition to contacting us at the foundation, there are also other organizations that serve similar populations, similar student populations, um, and help us spread the word and support applicants to the Young Scholars Program. So I listed a few of them on this slide. 
uh, for the most part, these organizations serve uh, specific regions throughout the country. So if you attend a school in um, a particular area or have completed a program, maybe like a online program or a summer program with that organization, they could be a great resource for application questions and information. Um, so I've got the, those organizations listed here and you can also um, find links to their websites and contact people um, on our website as well, the jkcf.org website. Okay, that brings me to the final slide, um, which just contains information on how to stay connected with the Cook Foundation. So if you are considering applying uh, either this year or in the future, you can visit our website, our social media pages. You can even sign up to receive email updates from us. Uh, and of course, if you have questions that aren't answered on the website, we have a really robust frequently asked questions section that we encourage you to um, take a look at if you do have questions, but if you don't find your question answered there, you can email us directly at scholarships at jkcf.org. Uh, and we look forward to interacting with you and helping you learn about um, Cook Scholarship programs, the Young Scholars Program in particular, or um, maybe giving you a lead to, to other resources that may be able to help support your academic journey. Thank you for your attention to this video and we wish you the best in your educational endeavors.